I'm so glad you've been able to join us once again for King's Kids. I just love being able to share amazing stories from the Bible with other members of God's royal family. Uh, today we are looking at some of the important words that God has for us. Uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, God gave us Ten Commandments to follow because He knows the best way for us to live. Uh, we will be looking at them today. Our verse to remember comes from Deuteronomy 11.13. It says, I love the Lord your God and serve Him with all your heart. Anyway, let's get on with our program. G'day there kids, and welcome along to Balloon Carboom. Uh, again, I've got my friend here with me, Pastor Darren. G'day there, Pastor Darren. Hi Arnie, hi boys and girls. It's so good to be back again. We making lemons, are we? Ah, no, it's not a lemon. And I'm gonna join two together. Right, two together. And join another two together. So if you join lots of lemons together, does that make lemonade? <laughs> no? It's not, they're not lemons, oh. Arnie. Okay, they're really not lemons. I'm going to join mm. now the four together. Right. And then I'm going to take this bunch of balloons right. and join them in. Yep. Then join another bunch in. Right. So there we have a whole bunch of balloons. Okay. So this is the face, Arnie. Nice face, Pastor Darren. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to put the face onto this animal. Right. Around and through. Yep. Tie it in. Now that's a lovely face. You like the face, Arnie? Mm hmm Now I'm going to put the horns on. Oh, the horns. That's a big clue. Right, and that is a big clue, boys and girls. The horns mm. and bring it around. Yep. Tie it in. Uh-huh. Be careful there, Pastor Darren. That's right. You want to go kaboom. Mm hmm And there it is. Two horns. All right, two horns. And the face. And a face. That's right. Yep. And the body. And a body. He needs the legs. legs. Right. Because otherwise he'd be legless. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right, he would be. Yep. I made two feet earlier. Oh, two feet. Put the feet on. Right. 
And the back legs. And back legs. Put them on at the back. Our legs at the back, yeah. Gonna give it some eyes. Yeah, give it, give it some eyes. Yep. And a nose. And a nose. And a mouth. Yep. And there it is. Uh, and there it is. Okay. Can you guess what it is, boys and girls? Um, yeah, they might know, but I'm not really 100% sure yet. Um, it's a llama. A llama? Mm. A llamas have long necks. This guy does have a long neck. Um, and he's very bubbly, boys and girls, and he's very woolly. Ah, oh, I think I've got these everywhere on my farm. Yeah, and they're sheep. It's a sheep, yeah. that's right. Do your sheep obey you? No. <laughs> they uh, don't. They obey the dogs. Well, back in Bible times, mm -hmm. you know the shepherd knew every sheep by name. Yeah, everyone by name. That's right. Wow. And he'll take them out. Mm. He'll use his shepherd's rod, which I made one earlier. That's incredible. You know how many sheep I've got, Pastor Darren? Who have you got? Thousands of them. I wouldn't know their name. You don't name your sheep? No. Well, the shepherd named the sheep. Well, you knew them all by name. He'll, he'll use his rod to lead the sheep out to pasture and he'll keep them safe all day. And the sheep knew the shepherd's voice and they would follow him and obey what he said. We can learn from sheep. Mm -hmm. Do we have to obey people? Uh, yeah, we do. Who do we obey? Uh, we have to obey the law of the government. That's right, and the mm -hmm. government's got a few laws right now to keep us safe. They do. God gives us laws to keep us safe too. So we have the best relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So be like a sheep. Right. And listen to God's voice yep. and follow him. Yep, I try to do that every day, Pastor Darren. I like that. Well, I, I like this sheep. I think I'll call him Sean. Sean the sheep. Yeah. Sean the yellow sheep. Mm. Want to take him home? Well, maybe I'll get it off you later, Pastor Darren, because he is quite big. Okay, mm. well, I'll hold him then. Okay. And the rod. And a rod. Oh, ripper. And remember, mm -hmm. follow the shepherd, listen to his voice. Follow the shepherd and listen to his voice. That is excellent advice, boys and girls. But we've got to go now. So from balloon to boom, uh, we'll catch you next time. See you, Pastor Darren. Bye, Arnie. Bye, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Uh, Deuteronomy 11.13 I love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart. Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to talk with you about sleep. Why do you need sleep? Your day is busy with school, taking care of pets, running around with friends, going to sports practice or other activities, and doing your homework. By the end of the day, your body needs a break. Sleep allows your body to rest for the next day. Everything that's alive needs sleep to survive. Even your dog or cat curls up for naps. It allows your body to grow and helps your immune system so you don't get sick. You need between nine to 11 hours of sleep a night for your body and your brain to recover from the day's activities. When your body doesn't have enough hours to rest, you may feel tired or cranky, or you may be unable to think clearly. You might have a hard time following directions or you might have an argument with a friend. Here are some tips to help you sleep better. Go to bed at the same time each night. Follow a routine that is calming. Have a bath or read. Don't have any junk food or sugar before bed. Don't watch TV or use your iPad or phone before bed. Boys and girls, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. Hi there, my name is Stephen, and it's time for our Bible story again, everyone. It's set in the time when the Israelites were getting ready to enter the land God had promised them. After 40 years of wandering around in the desert, Moses had been their leader, 
but God told him he was not going to go to the promised land with the Israelites. While he was pretty disappointed, he accepted God's wisdom and will. Moses was worried about the children of Israel, so he prayed and asked God to provide a good leader. God chose Joshua to take over from Moses and lead the Israelites. Joshua was a man of wisdom and faith, and so Moses was happy with God's choice. There was one last thing God asked Moses to do, and that was to remind the people of the 10 special rules that they had been given many years before at Mount Sinai by God himself. These rules are known as the 10 Commandments. These commandments were given not just to the Israelites, but to people of all times and all ages. God set up these 10 rules because he knows what is best for all of us. The rules are all about loving God and caring for those around us. Moses called the people together and reminded them of what God had done for them. God had rescued them when they were slaves in Egypt. He brought them safely through the Red Sea. In the desert, God had given them a pillar of fire to keep them warm and help them to see around the campsite at night and a cloud to shelter them from the hot desert sun during the day. God had given them manna for 40 years to feed them. Moses also reminded them of the wonderful blessings they would receive if they obeyed God and the curses of losing their land if they disobeyed. Disobeying would lead to no peace or safety and they would live in fear and sorrow with diseases. They needed to remember to trust God and follow his rules for their lives. Moses told them, Command your children to obey carefully all the words of this law. They are not just idle words, they are your life. This was the last message Moses left with the children of Israel. These important words to remember. They are still important words to remember. God knows what is best for us, so he has given us also these 10 rules to obey. The 10 Commandments. Why don't you have a look at them for yourself? God's important words to remember. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Take care, stay safe and God bless. What you gonna do when somebody asks you to do the wrong thing? What you gonna say? What you gonna do when somebody asks you? Over and over and over again you'll say no, no, I'm not gonna do it, say no, no, I'm not gonna do it, say no, no, I'm not gonna do when somebody asks you to do the wrong thing what you gonna say what you gonna do when somebody asks you over and over and over again you'll say no no i'm not gonna do it say no no i'm not gonna do it say no no i'm not gonna do it What you gonna do when somebody asks you to do the wrong thing? What you gonna say? What you gonna do when somebody asks you over and over and over again? You'll say no, no, I'm not gonna do it, say no, no, I'm not gonna do it, say no, no, I'm not gonna do it. Hey, Grandpa, when we 
visited Joe and Thelma yesterday. I heard you call them brother and sister, and we related. <laughs> uh, Shane, uh, back in my day, everyone in church called each other brother and sister. Well, we must have a big family, Grandpa. Uh, in a way, we do, Shane. You see, we all belong to God's family. Uh, when we believe in Jesus, uh, who he is, uh, what he has done, and what he is doing for us, we are all adopted into the family of God. Wow, that's cool! So I have heaps of uncles and aunties and brothers and sisters, and we can do potlucks and bonfires and barbecues and... Ah, uh, yes, Shane. And they say it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, the church is your village, uh, your extended family. Our uh, people you can look up to and learn what a relationship with God looks like. Hey, that's cool, Grandpa. I love my village. Ah, uh, yes, uh, that is what good stewardship is all about. Caring for each other like God cares for us. And I can care for the little kids who want to play ball with me. Ah, uh, that's cool too. Ah, uh, now you have it, Shane. Uh, that is what being a good steward is all about. Uh, talking of stewardship, it's time to give back to God. Uh, by giving back to God, we are helping to care for our family and share his good news with others as well. Uh, here's your wallet, Grandpa. Let's give heaps to God this time. Uh, remember, Shane, you can never outgive God. His blessings are always amazing. Uh, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Uh, this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Uh, Ephesians 1, 5. Hi, my name is Rosie and I will be making some paper flowers. First, you will need some pipe cleaners. If you don't have pipe cleaners, you can use some wire. Or if you don't have wire, you can use some twist ties. Second, you will need some tissue paper. If you don't have tissue paper, you can use some napkins. Then you will need 10 pieces of tissue paper cut into squares in one pipe. So, I will be start making it. I'm pretty sure this is about two. Make the pile neat and then you fold it like a fan. Now, you need a pipe cleaner. Now, we will be get one layer. And we'll fold it just as much as you can to the green. Then you'll keep doing that and then we'll do it on the next side. And you can also have to cup it a bit so it doesn't look very folded out. Now you have to ask your mum if you can use some of her perfume.
what you can do with it now, you can maybe decorate it with your room, you can maybe give it to your mum, maybe even your grandma. Now it will smell delicious. Look what I've done with mine. And now it's your turn to make it at your house. So if you faithfully obey the commandments I am giving you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That was from Deuteronomy 11:13, Andy. How about we pray? Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Yeah, well, Shane, we read before from Deuteronomy chapter 5, 1 to 22. So let's go through that in our own words. Okay. It's about the Ten Commandments. And, and God made a covenant with Moses on top of a mountain. And then he gave him the Ten Commandments for the Israelites. And he told them to have no other gods before me. Do not make an image of me. And, and don't misuse my name. And to keep the Sabbath. Yeah. And then the next six commandments talk about being a good person. Honour your father and your mother. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't say false things about others. And don't want what your neighbour has. Oh, cool. Hey, Andy, how about we do the Discovery Bible questions now? So what's new, Andy? Well, Shane, in the first section, it said God made a covenant with us. What does this mean? Well, Andy, I think a covenant is an agreement, an agreement that we will do what God asks us to do. Yeah, so does that mean that we need to follow these commandments as well? I think, yes, it does, Andy. Oh, OK, I'll work on that. Now, Shane, what surprises you? Well, what surprises me, Andy, that God wrote the commandments on two tablets of stone. Well, I guess stone stays around for a really long time, so that means that God wanted these to last. I guess you're right, Andy. Hey, Andy, what don't you understand? Well, Shane, what does it mean, you shall have no other gods before me? Well, I think it means we should uh, put God first in everything we do. Yeah, OK. So if we put God first and not let other things take over and stop us spending time with God. Yeah, like um, me spending too much time on the computer. So Shane, what will you obey or apply? Well, Andy, I'm going to choose to obey what God has told me to do. So Andy, what are you going to share with someone this week? Well, I'm going to tell my other friends that I'm choosing to obey what God has asked me to do. Like it says in Deuteronomy 11:13, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Now how we pray now, Shane. Yeah, let's do that. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week, Andy. Yeah, bye, Shane.
everything and shine shine i just like andy let's choose to follow god to follow the commandments he has given us now the last message that moses left for the children of israel is still important for us today have you looked up in your bible the ten commandments for yourself uh, why don't you take the time to do that today our god has given us these rules because he really does know what is best for us God's important words to remember. And the reason God has given us these commandments is not because he wants to make our lives difficult. It is because he really does know the best way that we can truly be happy. Now remember, he made us and he really does love us so very much. So serve him in everything you do and shine for the Lord. I'll catch you all next time. Stay safe and God bless.